Okay, so I thought we'd have a look at the insides of a um, MFJ 249. And um, uh, I thought, what the heck? Um, I've actually, first of all, I've got it hooked up onto my 40 meter beam. And as you can see, at about 7.224, SWR is about 2.2 to 1. Now, as I come down, we find that my beam is actually more resonant around the CW section uh, than, than I would like it. Uh, seven yeah, Above the CW section is still quite good. But watch this as I go up to sort of 7132, 1.2. Now, look, not a big deal. Um, <laughs> nobody cares. I, I get that. But interesting how you can sort of so fast find out just where your antenna is resonant and not resonant. Obviously, 7.4 is not good. So this is the two element 40 meter um, but it also gives you an idea just exactly its bandwidth too, which is actually good because um, with a little bit of adjustment of this beam, I would, <laughs> if I was putting it back up again, Fletch, um, I would just uh, change the adjustments ever so slightly uh, so that my uh, bottom point here, which is sort of around, oh, about, yeah, about there, 709, 708, is actually around about uh, 7135 something like that you know just have the center so that you can come down to 094 nicely up to 200 you know like at the moment when we got to 14 200 we're getting up a little bit higher than we'd like um that 1.7 1.7 1.8 um which is you know look i use a tuner here if i need to that which is which is fine but not necessary if we you know adjust the antenna correctly so these little devices can be quite handy but i just thought you probably haven't seen inside one before, so I thought, what the heck? I was a bit curious myself to see. They use uh, a couple of 9-volt batteries that you can actually run on. I'm just running off a, a DC lead at the moment uh, coming into this because it was just handy. Um, they use a little um, capacitor in there just basically to vary frequency, little display circuit, and then, of course, all the smarts uh, sitting in there in regards to um, its various bands and calculations that it's making. So... Um, they do have on the top of these little units um, input and gate. Now you can change. Uh, now let's have a look there. Sorry. Input A, input B. So basically, um, you can um, uh, run off the, the two inputs. You've got the gate, which will change the um, the decimal place, like so, and that can get you know quite accurate. But generally, for the sort of use that. Um, that we're doing here, um, this is fine. <laughs> this is absolutely fine. So, look, not a bad little device for the money. Um, these sold for about, um, oh, by the time you got them to Australia, probably about 350 or so. Um, and, um, you know, for simplicity and what they do, and look, I'm a big fan of the Rig ex Experts, to be very honest. If, if you said to me, what should I buy? Um, go buy a Rig Expert. Um, you know, like, uh, go spend eight, 900 bucks on a rig expert you'll never regret it actually i think now you can get one for about 650 700 um i haven't sort of i've got a double a 600 that i use and and look it just um look honestly it sits on the shelf doing nothing a lot but when i do need it it is very very handy um keep in mind uh, these units do um as distinct from the double a 600 that i use these do go up to vhf um my double a 600 uh goes up to 600 meg so you are getting a, a few extra you know like 70 centimeters etc uh not that i use it on 70 very much but but certainly as you can see um the um mfj uh hf vhf swa analyzer does the job it's it's not difficult to use no no smarts needed to be honest just basically adjust your capacitor get the lowest possible reading there oh i'm gonna be right in a minute that was better when i was looking at the screen yep and um you can just see how i'm having a bit of a play here uh, and that my resonance spot is a little bit lower than i'd like it to be on that particular beam um, varying a little bit with the wind blowing out there, I think. <laughs> but um, but as you can see, you know, it, it gives you a bit of a, an approximation um, of just where you're at and where it's not. <laughs> of course, this is going quite a way. Uh, you can then sort of check and say, well, all right, you know, um, does my does my beam work anywhere else? Um, start checking bands, etc. But you'll find generally, uh, particularly this beam, uh, it's a 40 meter beam. It's um, I mean, 14.8. It's probably you know usable. <laughs> um, you know, and as I'm sort of going through, I'm 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 really just checking bands and saying, you know, what can it do? Uh, actually, no, I want to go there. Let's have a, sorry, I was going to look at where I'm at. Oh, okay. Um, and you know, so you could just go all over the place. But um, a lot of what I'm doing here is just senseless. Um, 
you really want to go onto the band that you've got the antenna on, which is 4 to 10 in this particular situation, and then set your frequency counter, oh sorry, your um, adjustment down to, uh, oh, what am I doing wrong here, hang on. Yeah, actually I must admit, I just uh, blew out a bit of crud um, with my air duster on the uh, cap. There was just a little bit of rubbish in there that was just causing us um, a bit of a, a, a flicker, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. Um, so good, good opportunity just to uh, blow out a bit of rubbish. <laughs> and sometimes you'll find that with these variable caps. Um, it's uh, this one's been sitting. This is actually from a uh, not quite deceased estate, um, but unfortunately someone that's had to go into a home. Um, and um, I've got to. Um, uh, we're keeping a few bits, but we've got to sell off a little bit too. So we're, we're just working that out at the moment. Uh, so you'll probably see this come up fairly soon anyway. Uh, but yeah, all seems to be working quite well. Um, actually, I'm glad we got a chance just to blow that out, actually. I um, wouldn't have been happy with that. Anyway, that's, um, that's all good. So the MFJ249, basic, simple, easy, probably going to be for sale for a couple hundred bucks. Um, if you're looking for something HF, VHF, that's just going to be a great antenna analyzer to hook up and, and get a bit of an idea what's going on without going into all the graphs and all the bits and pieces I... I probably I was going to say that I do with my AA600, but I don't. I really don't. I, <laughs> I, I honestly use it very much like I use this little thing here. So it just shows you you can you can really get something pretty basic that will do the job, um, and not spend you know quite as much money. All right, we'll get this up um, probably on Alan's CCA site or something. Um, uh, maybe one of the Facebook pages or have a bit of a um, gander and um, try and get this thing listed up. Um, original books uh, come with it. Um, Chaff and Geelong that own this. Um, a uh, very well-known amateur, actually, and unfortunately, um, I'm very sad to hear that he's had to go into a home um, uh, with, uh, unfortunately, dementia issues, and um, the thing I get accused of lately so much, um, <laughs> mainly by Sam. Uh, but uh, yes, no, our heart goes out to him because he's a good guy, and i um, known him for many years, so just trying to sort out a few things on that side of things. Okay, 7-3 is all the best from VK3, Charlie Mike. Have a good day. Cheers.